Right then guys, I'm going to uh, set my ballistics parameters now for this rifle. Uh, the lens cap's closed, that's why it looks like that, but let me take you into the menu. <clears throat> so for those of you that don't know what the ballistics parameter does, this scope comes with a built-in uh, ballistics calculator. So when you range a target using the inbuilt range finder, it uses all this information that you input in now to give you a predictive point of impact which shows up as a cross on the crosshairs you line that cross up with the target take a shot and that's where your projectiles should hit if you've done everything correctly now i've already been into this menu and i've already set this up i've done another little video which i shall show you in a second with how to measure your scope height i think a lot of people struggle with that so we'll just go through it very quickly ballistic switch on that means that the ballistics calculator in the scope is on. You can turn it off if you want and just use a rangefinder as a rangefinder without it giving you a predicted point or aim point. But ours is on. Ballistics group A, that's your profile. So this is A. Ballistics coefficient C of the slugs that I'm using are 0.048. That's a 10 grain Zan slug. Uh, ballistics model G1, I find G1 easier to use. It works better for what I do. The bullet grain weight is 10 grains. The velocity that this rifle is shooting at is 714 feet per second. The zero range is 16 yards. That's because I've done it at home quickly. I will zero out a little bit further when I get to the farm. But I just want to point this out as well. I see a lot of people saying, what are you zeroing at? Not just for the one leaf, but for the Zulus, etc. It doesn't matter. You can zero at 16 yards or 60 yards if you're using the rangefinder and the ballistics calculator and you've got all your information in there correctly. The zero range doesn't matter. I can hit 20 mil discs at 75 yards with a 16 yard zero. It really honestly doesn't matter, guys. So I just wanted to clear that up. Scope height is 3.17 inch. I've, I'm going to show you a video next on how I deduce to that scope height. Now shooting degree and angle I set to zero. Wind velocity mile an hour I'd love to set to zero but it only goes to 0 0.1 for some reason and wind angle zero. Now the next settings these four which is altitude, temperature, barometric pressure and humidity all I've done and I've done this with the NV400 I've been into Google and I've asked Google what is the average winter temperature, what is the average uh, altitude, what is the average winter biometric barometric pressure and humidity and I've inputted them. So I only change this twice a year, I do summer and winter um, and the One Leaf MV400 which I've had for a year now has been absolutely faultless. So I don't want to change that every time I'm taking shots. Just put the average temperature in for that season. I just do winter and summer and it works well. So that is all my ballistics information in there. Hopefully now when I range a target, it should give me that predicted point of impact or that uh, aim point and it should be absolutely spot on. Right then guys, I'm about to set the ballistics parameters of this scope. So in order to do this, I have to put that scope height in the ballistics parameters so i'm going to do my best to fumble through this and try and show you how to measure your scope height this obviously is the mv500 but the method that i'm going to show you will work with any scope that's got a ballistics app in it uh, also work on day scopes to put the data into strelok pro so this scope's normally mounted further back but i've moved it forward so i can get access to the bottom of the shroud and the top of the lens it's a zero MOA rail, so it's constant from front to back, so it'll work for this. If you've got a raised MOA rail, it won't work. You will have to input the MOA, but I'm going to show you this anyway. So you're going to need a set of calipers for this. You'll see on the board, I've already written scope and I've written barrel. So basically what you want to do with your calipers is measure the diameter of the scope. So that's 2.30 inch. So I'm reaching over 2.30 inch, all right? Then you wanna measure the shroud. So I'm gonna to come to the front 
and measure the shroud and that's measuring 1.80 so it's 1.80 inch then what you want to do is measure the space between them but in order to do this you're going to have to measure from the bottom of your barrel or your shroud to the top of the lens make sure it's nice and stable and you get the measurement and that measurement is 5.22 inch so from the bottom of the shroud to the top of the lens it is five point what did i say let me read it again two 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 inch right so let me just pop this down so now you've got the three measurements that you need you've got the scope diameter the barrel diameter and then the uh, space <coughs> excuse me so now what you want to do is you want to get the center of the scope the center of the barrel so half of 2.3 1.15 so 1.15 inch so that's the center of the scope and the barrel 1.8 so 0 0.9 inch 0 0.9 inch so let me just grab a calculator quickly so what we want to do now now we've got the zeros or the the centers is we want to take 1.15 inch away from the 5.22 and that'll give you the sum then we want to take 0 0.9 inch away from that sum and that is giving me 3.17 so 3.17 inch and that's the value that you want so that is center of shroud or center of barrel to center of lens that's the value that i will be putting into the ballistics calculator on this nv500 right then guys that's how i measure my scope height so just to recap um, you want overall measurement of the lens and barrel and then you divide them measurements by two and that gives you dead center of each then you've got the mean measurement which is bottom of barrel to top of lens and you subtract those two from that which gives you the measurement dead center um, barrel to dead center lens which in this case is 3.17 that's the method i use i've had fantastic success with that method on strelok pro day scopes and all of my night vision scopes so i hope that helps you right guys we've come to the last part of setting up the ballistics calculator on the rifle this is a really really important step it must be done and for some reason a lot of people don't do it i don't get i don't get why at all but a lot of people don't do it so you need to come out into the field where you've got enough room to stretch the rifle out a little bit and basically all the information that you've already put in you want to check um, then you want to possibly tune it and then you want to confirm it and i'm going to show you how to do that if you go on my channel there is a video that i made a few months ago about how to tune your uh, bc so that's what we're going to do here now basically i've already re-zeroed the gun at 20 yards and i've zeroed it you know within a nat's testicle um so it's zeroed at 20 yards now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pace it out and um it's just over 40 yards i'll tell you what it is when we get on the scope um i'm going to arrange that distance and then i'm going to use the predicted sh shooting solution to shoot that solution now if the pellet goes low i'll know that my bc that's set in that ballistics parameters my bc is too low so i'll just lower it a little bit and i'll keep doing that until the predicted aim point matches the actual point of impact if it goes high i'll know my ballistics uh, my bc is ballistics coefficiency is too low so i will raise it until the predicted point of impact meets the uh, actual point of impact i have never tuned um, my rifle scope height 
after setting it because I do it the way that I've just showed you. I see on a lot of groups people are messing about and they know that their scope height's wrong in the app but as long as they match it up it doesn't matter. That's the wrong way to do it I think. I think you've got to tune your BC to match that. So we're going to get on the scope in a minute. I've already zeroed it at 20. I'll show you that zero quickly and then we're going to range the further target. I don't know what range that is because I've just paced it out but one thing to remember it has to be at least double your range uh your, your zero so if you zero at 20 it needs to be 40. if you zero at 10 it needs to be a minimum of 20. if you zero at 30 it needs to be 60. Uh, they're the minimum so it needs to be at least double your zero range and then you just tune that bc in and yeah then we'll bring it back to zero we'll check the zero still on and then we'll test different ranges basically and see how we're doing um, everything should be absolutely spot on thereafter but I'm going to go in the rifle now and I'm going to show you right then this is the 20 yard target that I told you about so we'll zoom in a little bit we'll just rearrange it in fact we'll zoom out to range it so ranging on 20 point nine so i'll change that in a second right when i'm re I, zeroing i like to i know it sounds a cliche but aim small miss small and all that nonsense so i don't aim for the red dots um, i aim for a small mark so the number nine is free that's one shot on zero and that's two shots on zero so we are zero that's 21 yards or 20.08 yards i believe it was and now we're going to move out to that target there and we're going to have a go at that now that i'm just going to take that off yep yeah. so i'll bring it back down on the box so that is 41.4 yards and the predicted aim point is actually still the same so that must be the second zero i would assume so we're going to zoom in a little bit at 40 yards we'll focus up and we're going to use the predicted aim point and we're going to aim for the number eight And we've knocked the number eight out you can see that guys i'll try and zoom in a bit more and focus her up we've knocked the number eight out there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever right i've not had to change any of my bc or tune it um that's partly because i know that the zan slugs run out of this barrel um at 0 0.048 bc they just do um, I've done this in my on my MV400 and my Zulus so I know it's on zero I know at double the zero the ballistics calculator is working so I will refocus in a second guys bear with me this is 18 yards now we're going to come close and we're going to check the BC price so And there we are now this one let's focus upon this and the range finding and that is 11.9 yards you can see the predicted point of impact or the aim point has moved so we're going to shoot from that not the crosshair guys there's nothing wrong with this now this one is closer still, so we're ranging it now and we're coming back at 10.1 yards, so I'm not sure if I loaded this or not. Guys honestly, so I'm hitting from 10 yards to 40 yards 
using the ballistics calculator all the information that i put in there i'm, I'm turning the rangefinder on getting a ping off of that um, and the scope's using all that information that i put in to give me a predicted uh, x on my crosshair where i should aim i'm using that aim point and you can see absolutely spot on um, that's partly because i know through using the nv400 the nv500 i know my ballistics coefficiency but i've told you how to tune the ballistics coefficiency go back on my videos and there's another video on how to tune your ballistics coefficiency but just get everything else right your scope height get that as accurate as you possibly can and you won't need to do any of the you know all that daft stuff in the i see on the forums all the time people messing about don't get everything as accurate as possible and then tune the bc you've just seen that it works